Also, it's just a real estate donation. Contractor license 1023790. Kenny, I heard Gettle Air Conditioning has an irresistible offer for everyone out in radio land. We use that. We do. Well, tell me about it. Rejuvenation. But the summer's about over. I know. That's why the time is now. Oh, I forgot. You have to explain that. If you have electric heat, your heater is just your air conditioner running backwards all yeah. around. How do you? You're saying it needs some refreshment? Yes. And if you have gas heat, I now is the time to make sure your AC is in tip-top shape and restored to factory specs so that you can turn it on with confidence when the desert heat returns in a couple of months. Rejuvenation. Rejuvenation. How much? Just $129. That's a great deal. Great deals are what I'm known for, Zach. Really? I thought you was mostly known for having a dog man safe. Well, that's it. Yeah, G-O-E, C-P-L. Sadie said to say hello, by the way. With so many protein bar options, how do you choose? Here's a little secret. They keep the fresh ones in the fridge. G2G bars are premium protein bars that taste amazing. Find them in the fridge at Alberton's Smart and Final Extra and G2GBar.com. KFI AM640. It's combo. And indeed, I now sleep soundly through the night. Plus, I'm losing weight. It's amazing. I've maybe gotten four to five hours of sleep max a night. I'm sleeping between six and seven. I wake up to use the bathroom, but I go right back to sleep, which has never happened before, which is pretty awesome. I noticed a higher level of happiness. I also noticed that I wasn't taking naps. I had more energy. I was more in the moment with my kids. Like, we were laughing more. We were more excited. Every single person needs to feel this. I lost 10 and five and a half inches off my waist and I'm so proud of myself. It gives you energy, it helps you sleep better. It just works. I stand by it 100%. I was on a handful of medications to help me sleep, to help me be happy. Tons of therapy. When I'm ready to go to sleep, I'm getting seven to nine hours of sleep every night. I've lost some pounds, um, inches mainly. My family has me back. Try Accelerate and Elevate, discounted for listeners to the show. Plus, further discounts with the Georgia's Power Pack, including a free gift. Learn more and order now at HealthyLooking.com. That's HealthyLooking.com or 800-394-9930. So jump on the path now to all-day energy, better focus, better sleep, and weight loss with Accelerate and Elevate at HealthyLooking.com. That's HealthyLooking.com or 800-394-9930. It's real. Birch Gold delivered gold and silver to my door, and now it's in my hands. I know you have a contingency plan for emergencies, right? You may have a generator, food supplies, a little cash, but what about a contingency for your currency? Inflation is edging their 30-year highs, and with trillions in proposed added government spending, it's looking to go higher. Protect your savings with something not tied to the U.S. dollar, gold and silver. Birch Gold has it, and they can get it directly to your door. When you text COAST to 989898 and purchase precious metals from Birch Gold by December 23rd, you'll get free silver for every $5,000 you buy. Birch Gold has an A-plus rating with the BBB and thousands of happy customers. Text COAST to 989898 for your free, no-obligation info kit on diversifying your savings into gold and silver and to claim your free silver with a purchase by December 23rd. Text COAST. The 98, 98, 98, and protect your savings today. Want to learn a new language so it will actually stick? Try Babbel. Practice real life conversations in the Babbel app. Como te llamas? Como te llamas? Get personalized help in Babbel's live online classes. Classes are limited to six people, so everyone can get the help they need. Review words and phrases with fun games. Or dive into the culture with short videos. Whatever your learning style, Babbel gives you the tools you need. Babbel, more ways to learn. Now try Babbel free at Babbel.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Fever is the leading symptom of COVID and the flu. And the only way to reliably detect it is with an accurate thermometer. Be vigilant and be accurate with the Exogen Temple Scanner, whose accuracy has been proven in more than 100 clinical studies. Don't rely on non-contact thermometers. They're proven to be inaccurate and will not reliably detect a fever that might mean COVID. 
Be sure to seek medical advice at the first sign of fever. Learn more at estrogen.com. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Norrie with you. Back in March of 1997, one of the biggest UFO sightings of our current time took place as the Phoenix Lights. Had a chance to talk with Dr. Lynn Kitai on the 20th anniversary of this amazing sighting. 20 years ago today, thousands of people in the Phoenix area witnessed seeing something very unusual in the sky. Late at night, a series of lights in a triangle type pattern very unusual it was known now as the phoenix lights i remember back then 1997 i was uh, heading up my nighthawk show in st louis and we heard that story and we were covering it as well not being in phoenix little did we know just how widespread it was at the time it turned out to be an absolutely huge story as a matter of fact the governor at the time fife symington kind of laughed about this, held a news conference, had somebody dress up like an alien, and came by. But he recanted sometime later. As a matter of fact, I was on the Larry King show with him when Fife Simonton was there, and he said, you know what? I was wrong. There's something very unusual about that sighting. At the time, Dr. Lynn Kitai, of course, wasn't part of the Phoenix Lights. But she sure was after it got going, and here she is on Coast to Coast. Lynn, you have really done a remarkable job over these 20 years with this story. Um, it has become a true labor of love, I must say, and I'm so excited to uh, visit with you again, George, and, and with your Coast to Coast listeners, because there is so much myth and disinformation out there, <laughs> especially through the last 20 years, that so much has come to light, and I'm so excited to be able to, to share the, the true data because yes, I pushed my entire medical career aside because I had had a sighting up close and personal two years before the mass sighting, that 35 millimeter photograph of incredible anomalous aerial phenomena right outside our bedroom window. My husband is also a physician and I both saw the same thing. I got pictures of it, didn't even know who to show it to, um, show them to because I had no interest or knowledge in the topic at all and wondered what this advanced technology was doing right outside our bedroom window with mountainside in Paradise Valley and we have a panoramic view of the city skyline from our home. We're pretty high up and one window is of our uh, bedroom, uh, one wall of our bedroom is a window that um, we know what helicopters and street lights and car lights and so forth look like and <laughs> this was quite different. These were orbs, uh, actually oval orbs in a pyramid formation. I hope you have some time later on to get into that. Oh, sure. Close sighting yeah. because they were analyzed by Navy optical physicist Dr. Bruce Magaby meticulously, and he actually presented the case in 1999 to the MUFON International Symposium in Washington, D.C. His conclusion is very riveting, so I hope we can get to that. But uh, in the meantime, I wondered for two years what this advanced technology was and didn't even know who to show the pictures to until two months before the mass sighting. This is really important data, and anybody that's by a computer, um, I welcome them to go on the Phoenix Lights Network, Phoenix Lights Network uh, website, thephoenixlights.net, and go to the photo page, because I am the only one with 35 millimeter photographs that before, during, and after the mass sighting, that I have had, ex I have gone to extreme lengths to have them explain to me, analyzed, authenticated at university and military levels by optical experts and across the board no one could tell me what they are but in the meantime i happened to capture the same exact mile wide phenomena of equidistant lights that i would capture on video during the mass sighting but this is two months before and this is amazing data because i caught this thing head on turning into a big and it was at a distance now, and I was, it was so unnerving not having an explanation for 95 that I called around, found the air traffic controllers at Sky Harbor International Airport who saw the same thing at the same time, and they were alarmed because they appeared over Class B restricted airspace, about a thousand feet altitude. They immediately looked on radar, did not show up on radar. They took their binoculars to look in their own words, and this is poignant because you would hear this over and over again months later by thousands of people. They saw six points of light 
totally equidistant from each other, masses span over a mile wide. It seemed to be attached to something, but they couldn't quite see what it was attached to. And there's a 30 mile radius. Anyone that goes into that radius, especially uh, five miles away, if these were a thousand feet altitude, they couldn't quite see what it was attached to, or there was a force field holding these worms to these balls of light in rock solid formation. And one of them was a meteorologist and said that the whole thing turned as a unit against the wind. And here I am taking pictures of it while it's happening. Elevated slowly and then moved in synchrony behind South Mountain. Which very is slowly, south, too. Very yeah. slowly. Right behind South Mountain, which is just south of the airport. So I said, so what was it? And there was silence. And then one of the air traffic controllers at Deep Z, I said, your air traffic controller, you're supposed to know it's in our airspace. They ruled out every conventional possibility, every aircraft, balloons, um, lanterns, uh, as well as even skydivers with lights. We kept in contact. I continued photographing the phenomena up and through, including March 13th, when thousands of people were looking up at the sky purposely for a glimpse of the half off planet, when they also caught a glimpse of miles to two mile wide and even larger. Uh, Peter Dobbins was in the National UFO Reporting Center said one of the crafts, because this is something that has come out after a 12 year compilation of thousands of reports. To the National UFO Reporting Center in Seattle, Washington, Arizona, and the National UFO Network, uh, then former Councilwoman Vice Mayor Chris Francis Farwood, who was the only elected official who innocently asked for an investigation in May, and she was blasted by the media. Oh, that, uh, I think that destroyed her political career. I mean, it wasn't a pretty picture of anyone that came forward in those days, but. Um, and also Village Labs, which was a, a computer lab near ASU, Arizona State University, that was kind of a clearinghouse for many of the reports. Anyway, the conclusion was that there were 10 different crafts that people saw. I'm telling you, there is so much information that unless you really look at the data, uh, the general public, or, or read my book, it's like a skeptic discovery that we're not on the field on, on the web. Which you've updated, yeah. too, by the way. This book is updated now. Yes, we just came out with the 20th anniversary edition of the book, it's the third edition, 20th anniversary of the Phoenix Place Beyond Top Secret, and I also, which I have to get to talk about, uh, I've been working on this curriculum for, for five years, and wanted to get something out that's really fun and exciting and informative for all ages, and we just came out with the um, graphic novel and coloring book. <laughs> I, heard, I heard about that. Yeah, the Phoenix Place <laughs> UFOs and Cross Circles. Adventures of Sue Echo Field Observer and Hugh, these little aliens, H-U-G-H-U-F-O. In fact, um, we have such an amazing team, Mark Mankins and David Lucy and Kate Hooker, and also trying to get this together with UFO Studios, uh, Don Garner, to actually make it interactive. But the book itself is 160 pages. It's just it is. Let, 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 let me ask you, the, the, what could be one craft, or could it have been many of those lights? Let's say each light was a craft, or was it connected? That's a great question. Well, first of all, you know, just so people can picture this in their minds, I mean, here people are seeing these formations of light. Some people just saw formations of light that just seem to have to be attached to something. Others saw actual craft go right over their heads at the top level. Some people said they could have thrown a rock at it. It was actually a huge V shape, right? Well, that's interesting too. And if you look on the GAP page, G A T C Spatial Animation Project, we also have them in the coloring book. There were ten different trips, and they're very different. Now, whether it was one craft that could morph into looking differently, hmm. or the perspective from where the person was standing, or a parade, and that's the point because if you really look at the data. There were many things happening. This is why there's, you know, when people say there was one, one or two events, it was just for a couple hours, just move forward because it was over a dozen hours. Not only was it seen for days before by other people, including Steve Wander, who called Mufon up to his balcony, and he happened to catch that night the arrowhead figure. You asked about the shape. Mm -hmm. There was C shape, there was triangle shape, there was delta shape. There was boomerang shape, and there was even disc shape. And when you look at the data, this is starting at 3 p.m. in the afternoon of the daylight studies in Arizona, 5 o'clock hour in New Mexico, 7 o'clock hour in California. There's an amazing report that I have in the book of, of two commercial airlines 
pilots and, and crew and, and passengers that were approaching Las Vegas and one of these miles to two miles wide and even bigger, that's what the report said, one of them was eight miles wide, okay, covered Las Vegas. And that's a story in itself. But at any rate, there were many things going on, orb formations as well as the craft throughout the state and beyond for over a dozen hours. Yeah, up until 5.30 the last report that, that I know of personally, that I was in case 5 at the end of the who were in detail, told me that the crew was coming in to work at Sky Harbor International Airport and one of these crafts was hovering right over their tarmac. And the other interesting story, um, besides the fact that technology, which was amazing, um, these, these crafts glided, some of these crafts glided very, very slowly and then took off its little feet, totally silent, without even dispersing the air. But all together, right? They, they, they came in together, they left together. No, they, they, no, they were happening at different places at different times. Really? Like it was splitting up from the triangle? Yes, in fact, if you look at the pictures on the gas page on the VA Friends Network website, one of them actually split in two. And two or more people had wow. to see the same uh, event to be able to even go into the study. And one of them split in two and then shot straight up in the air. Um, you know, I, I've been documenting these things for weeks, and I knew no one uh, that was involved with the topic. In fact, it, it got to the point where I really wanted to have someone to analyze what I had, especially the close uh, sighting. And this is how close I was. A friend of a friend had a neighbor who had a friend who was the past president of MUFON, Mutual UFO Network. So I gave him a call. I said, I've been seeing these orbs which he hadn't heard about, but there were other people that were seeing them and documenting them on film as well for days before. And he referred me to a field investigator. Uh, we make an appointment for the following week on Wednesday, as well as Tuesday, to say that the then state director who wanted to be here, his mom had passed on Saturday, the funeral was Wednesday, could be the phone. And the only window of opportunity that I had for another two, three weeks was Friday morning. Meanwhile, I knock on the door, he opens the door, and he said, did you see the big sighting last night? And I said, I saw something very similar to two months ago. In fact, I got video of it. He said, great, because NBC was going to be there in a half an hour to interview him. He said, hundreds, not thousands of people saw these orbs that were uh, attached to something and crashed. And, uh, and, and it really blew me away. I said, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I used to do hard reporting for NBC in Phoenix, actually Philadelphia in 76, and then in Phoenix in the early 80s. And, Somebody might recognize me, and, and you know, I didn't know what we were dealing with, if it was a host or, or military or whatever, but it's not about me, it's never been about me, sure, it's about the data. And I said, you know what, take a copy of the video, show it to whoever, I'm out of here. And I called the air traffic controllers, they um, conferred with me that they had seen the same thing over a class two restricted airspace. At 4.30 that next day, I was sitting in front of my television with a VCR on, and going from channel to channel, and must have been comical if anybody was watching it, every station was showing my video. Okay. I <laughs> it was unbelievable. And by 9 o'clock, a couple other videos came out, the boomerang video and the arrowhead video. Uh, I was just, uh, I mean, I was blown away. Now, you know, I'm learning that thousands of people saw what I had been seeing, and then the following week I found out this is happening worldwide, and the Village Labs is right here in... Phoenix and Tempe, actually, near ASU, mm -hmm. with analysis. And again, that's it. I ended up not only pushing my career aside for seven years, I stayed anonymous for seven years, you know, keeping an interest of journal. I ended up with a 750 page journal that ultimately, as a scientist, as an educator, as an experiencer, and even as a, as a physician, George, to let people know that they're not crazy and they're not alone, even though most anomalies can be explained, only a small percentage can not. Just because you don't have the technology yet to definitively define what these things are, it doesn't mean they're not real. You may just be looking on the AM dial for an FM frequency. Huh. So well, be, be, all the time, what were they? I don't know what they were, but I know that they are. Before we go to calls, tell me about the work of Dr. Bruce. Wow. So, uh, that's a whole story. <laughs> Um, actually, the, the close sighting, if I can be the close sighting, because I think many people that are listening may relate to this, that have seen uh, these unexplained phenomena. Um, 
it's again a little coincidence. Um, it happened the night before my birthday. Uh, in 95, I was visually taking a bath in the other room. My husband was standing at the at our big picture window, which one wall up above the other room window, and anything that pops up out there, because we have a camera on the view of the city skyline, and we would get to see, and things coming in and out of that hole going to for us. And, uh, he was on several medical state boards, and uh, nothing ever ruffled his feathers. He was actually talking to my mother in law, who told me where she had to go back to that beach. And suddenly he said, Get out of here, what the hell is this? And, and I grabbed, and that's something that's already unlike what he would say. And I grabbed my, my towel and I rushed over to the window, really wet. And here we see three orbs in a pure hallucination. Lisa Lyon, Lex Longer, Sean Martin, oh, Sarah, Stephanie Smith, Chris Paul, Simbanal, George Knapp, and Ian Punnett. We'll be back later somewhere else on our Coast to Coast AM. We'll see you on our next edition of Till Then. Be safe, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Experts at medicine, chefs are experts at cooking.
Pepsi. And Mom, well, they're experts at everything. Right, Dad. But there's one thing practically nobody's an expert in. How to shop for the right mattress. Because it's six weeks, you know, shopping for a mattress isn't something you do every day or even every eight years. That's why inside every sit and sleep, you'll find highly trained mattress experts with an average of 10 years experience who know everything about mattresses if you don't. Then, we go one step further by giving our mattress experts Bedmatch technology that scientifically analyzes your body's needs to 14 and recommends just the right mattress for you. It's a winning combination that's helped millions of Southern Californians get the deep restful sleep that's so critical to helping you feel your best every day. So for expert advice about your neck mattress, trust your sleep to sit and sleep. I'm an expert at other things besides mattresses. Like what, Dad? Screaming free! Portions of the following program will be recorded. Good morning, my early rising friends. I am Dean Sharp, the house whisperer, custom home builder, custom home designer. It is just about 6 o'clock. That means for the next two hours, I'm going to be here with you as a friendly voice and your Saturday morning and your personal guide, turning your ordinary house into something extraordinary. We're doing all calls today. You're in charge of the show. So now is the time to jump into the queue. The number to reach me at 833-2-ASK-DEAN. 833, the number 2 Asking, let's talk about what's going on with your home today. It all gets started in just a couple of minutes, so stay tuned and welcome home. This is KFI and KOSP HD2 Los Angeles, live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. KFI AM 640. KFI live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. It's hard to keep track of everything that's going on. Luckily, that's a little hobby of ours. KFI. And KOSP HD2. Los Angeles, Orange County. Live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Free her baby one more time. I'm Brian Broom and live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. Britney Spears supporters are celebrating the end of the singer's conservatorship that's been in place for almost 14 years. People cheered in the streets outside the courthouse where a judge ended the arrangement. This woman says she thinks the end of Spears' conservatorship will have a ripple effect on other cases. I think that what it's going to do is that it's going to shed light on this issue, and it's going to make people stand up and say, now that we know what's going on, you can't unknow these things. And if you don't do something, and if you don't stand up for what's right, then you become complicit in it. The judges moved yesterday was widely expected, as there wasn't much support left for keeping the conservatorship. Blake Trolley, KFI News. News brought to you by Ruder Hero. Rapper Travis Scott is facing lawsuits from around 200 people who attended the Astro World Music Festival where at least nine people were killed. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump is representing the group and he says festival goers were hurt physically and mentally. We will make sure that they get justice because this should have never, ever happened. Hundreds of people were hurt when the crowd at Scott's show in Houston last Friday surged towards the stage. Scott has apologized, and he says he wasn't told about the deaths and injuries until the next day. California is one of four states recommending COVID-19 vaccine booster shots for any adult who wants one. ABC's Stephanie Ramos says health experts are saying the boosters will help keep the COVID surge during the winter months from getting out of control. That winter surge just beginning. Hospitals from Colorado to Vermont scrambling to care for more COVID patients. Many hospitals seeing more vaccinated patients, like older people and the immunocompromised. Colorado, New Mexico, and West Virginia are also recommending adults 18 and older get the booster shot. The CDC is expected to announce updated booster shot guidance soon. Residents of Riverside County can dump hazardous waste for free today. Paint, pesticides, motor oil, and fluorescent light bulbs are among the items that can be dropped off at the collection event from 9 to 2 at the Oasis Landfill on 84th Avenue. All county residents can participate, but it's only for household waste, not businesses. The other city council is taking steps to keep Zillow, Redfin, and other large tech companies and private equity firms from buying affordable homes as investments. During the council meeting's public comments yesterday, this guy told the council that it's important to put limits on these companies. Okay, two single-family homes by any person or entity. Otherwise, what's going to happen? is these companies will just break up into little shell companies and they'll circumvent what you're trying to do. The council says it won't work with its legal team to come up with strategies to deal with the problem. And someone's a long way from home. 
It's a penguin nicknamed Tango by the locals in Tango. New The penguin was found underweight and dehydrated walking along a beach recently, almost 1,800 miles away from its home in Antarctica. Little Pingu is given fluids and fish smoothies and was given a clean bill of health before being released back into the wild. This is just the third time this type of penguin has been found in New Zealand. The only other live one was found almost 30 years ago. Amy King, KFI News. People around the globe are lending a hand and sharing a smile in honor of World Kindness Day. The holiday is recognized today and encourages people to go out of their way to be nice. Some ways to celebrate are to volunteer, donate to a charity, compliment strangers, and do random acts of kindness. World Kindness Day has been celebrated. And we are looking at a crack on the 105. 105 the folks at White Sox want to make sure that new information stays secure. So let's say during the pandemic, even now, you're working overtime, you're saving your money, you're paying off your debt, and now some identity thief wants to steal your information. This is why LifeLock by Norton helps monitor your information and alerts you to potential identity A dedicated USA specialist will be there to help you. No one thinks about all identity theft to monitor every friend that you have. But when identity thief wants to take Save up to 25% off your first year, call 800 Life Lock or go to lifelock.com promo code handle. That's lifelock.com promo code handle or call 800 Life Lock promo code handle. Once again, that's promo code handle for 25% off at lifelock.com. South on Brothers and Clear 5, Southern Hot Today, some light to medium winds across SoCal, mid 70s below 80 to the beaches, mid 80s below 90 to the Metro LA and OT, mid 80s below 90 to the Inland Valley, and mid 80s below 90 to the Northern Empire. Clear skies tonight, cleaning down a little tomorrow, some tidy clouds start. Right now it's 64 degrees, and 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 it's Tangled. Try perfections. And the two cents never.